Honey? Someone on Twitter called me a cunt. So the Booker Prize got announced today, this morning, I, I woke up especially for it, thinking that uh, this book that I'm about to talk about was going to win, or maybe the Richard Powers book, but it was neither of them, it was The Promise, which I'm going to read now, I've just bought it and I'm going to talk about it. Um, but uh, I, I was planning to review this book for a while, because I knew that what I was going to do for the Bad Booker, because I don't have time to read six books, fuck that. I mean, even the, even the Booker Committee don't have time to do that. Um, so what I was going to do is I was going to review the one that wins, and the one that's the worst thing I've ever seen on one of these lists. <laughs> the book is called No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. Uh, Patricia Lockwood is a uh, comic writer, comic in the, in the quotations. Um, we'll discuss her, her brand of comedy in a sec. Um, she wrote a book called Priest Daddy, um, which I actually kind of liked. I thought it was, I thought it wasn't bad at all. I thought there were some points in it that were genuinely quite witty, and it was like, you, you could tell it came from a, a place of real love, as opposed to this book, which comes from a place of misunderstanding and hate. But Priest Daddy, I, 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 I thought was, uh, funny and, uh, short and, uh, very endearing. I thought it was a very likable book. And she has written this book. Uh, it took her about three years. The Wikipedia says that she wrote it on her iPhone. Uh, just like the author of Fifty Shades of Grey, I might add. Uh, no comparison there. So this book is about the internet. Ooh. More specifically, it's about the internet as seen through the lens of someone who... Uh, is, is, is trying to understand the, the, okay, but, okay, okay, fuck, okay, alright, hang on. So, how do I even begin to voice my criticisms here? So, <laughs> this is really tough. Alright, so the book is about a woman who I think is a celebrity, I really don't know, uh, and she is addicted to her phone or something, uh, which she calls the portal. And over time she finds it very difficult to distinguish between real life and uh, the, the life of the, the portal, which is, uh, Twitter, Facebook, I don't know, whatever the fuck places people talk to each other on the internet, right? Uh, and then in the second half of the book, her kid dies or something, and then she's like, I don't like the internet anymore. And then the book ends. God, this is like trying to fucking wade through fucking dirty sewer water, that's what this is. It's like, how the fuck do I even start? Do I take my shoes off first, or do I just fucking go in bold? What the fuck do I do? How do I talk about this? I'm sure she loves giving people like me this reaction, this kind of, Why do I even begin? Oh, this book is so hard to talk about, fuck, Oh No! <laughs> so the book is kind of stream of consciousness, which is the easiest way to write a book. It's the easiest way to pretend like you have something to say, is to write it in stream of consciousness, or anything like that. This book is... It seems like it comes from the place of someone who doesn't understand the internet. And I'm sure that Patricia Lockwood loves getting criticism from her book, and I'm sure that she hear that she doesn't understand the internet from someone like me, from someone my age who looks like a fucking homeless person, and she'd be like, ah ha ha, I could just waft away that criticism, because my book isn't about that, I could just waft it, that criticism could go away. But it really seems to me like she doesn't understand the internet, right? So the book kind of gets trapped in this endless cycle of little bizarre little vignettes that all lead up to three main points. Internet bad, um... Uh, internet not real, and internet making me think things that I otherwise wouldn't think. The, the problem is, is that it takes these points and it runs with them, and after about the first 50 pages, it does nothing new with them, right? I'm sure she'd resent that, I'm sure Patricia Lockwood would disagree with me, but that's what I'm saying. She does nothing else new with it. So the second half, she has a kid and then the kid dies, I think. I'm not sure. I think that's probably what happened. I don't give a fuck. I tapped out. Um, but... When, when that happens, the, the woman kind of comes away from the internet and she kind of gains this sort of appreciation. And then it ends with her giving a lecture in the British Museum. The fuck? She gives a lecture in the British Museum and she's like, oh, what the fuck did she say? Hang on, I've got it up here. It was not possible to see where she had gone wrong, where she would go wrong. She said Garfield is a body positivity icon. She said Abraham Lincoln is daddy. Oh, fuck, that's cringe. She said the eels in London are on cocaine. It was fitting finally to appear in that place and exhibit herself and from far away, collaged together in body and mind, monstrous in the eyes of the future, an imbecile before the Rosetta Stone. So what she's saying is that internet is bad, and also internet is a bad 
push forward to our future, right? Which is what 40-year-old women say who only use MySpace. She mentions MySpace on here. The, who the fuck? No one uses MySpace. No one fuck. Nobody uses Twitter and is like, D someone called me. A, someone called me a cunt. <laughs> someone called me the N-word. No one. No one who uses Twitter and thinks that way should ever write a book about the internet, right? They shouldn't. Okay. It's impossible to understate how long this book is for what it is. It's so long. It's like if it was a novella, maybe. It could work. It's close. I'll give it that. It's actually close. A lot of people on the internet, like a lot of the reviewers, really don't know what to make of it. And they're like, it's either a work of genius or a fucking exercise in like, I don't know, tepidity, right? But it's like, it's so close. And I think it's what, I think it's the length that drags it down. Because after a certain point, when it's just little paragraphs of like, this paragraph is about putting a dildo in my ass. This paragraph is about how my mum sends me the eggplant emoji and that's like the dick emoji. Ah, fuck. What, what that does is it, it, it just like, after about a hundred pages, you get so fed up with it. It's so annoying. And I get the feeling that she's trying deliberately to make it annoying because I guess that's what the internet is like, even though it really isn't. So I, I think the idea is that because she keeps pummeling us with the things that this woman sees, she sees a new species of tree frog has been discovered. The Mars rover said, uh, light's getting dark or whatever the fuck it said. That's literally me. Be because she keeps pummeling us with that, I guess the implication is that we're kind of getting the same experience that the woman, the main woman does. Except I don't, because I don't use Twitter, because I'm not a fucking 40 year old woman, right? <laughs> It's like, internet bad, internet make you lose sense of self, internet prints ideals on you, blah blah blah, and it's like, yeah, it, again, again, it does that if you're a four-year-old Twitter user who's never been outside, right? Okay? Like, it may be intentional and self-aware like that, but if it is so annoying that I have to take it away from the rating. The other thing is that the humour is very bad in this book, it's very, very weak. Because, like, pre-study, there are some, like, actually funny lines, like, funny setups, funny payoffs, it's, it's, it's good. But with this book, it, it the humour comes from the, like, I guess, the, the, sh the shocking nature of the thing that's been said that's then linked to the book. So, there's a, uh, the bit that stands out to me is the bit where she's talking about, I have a veiny dildo, why does it have veins on it? Imagine if you put that up your ass, and then the husband's like, but I'm not gonna put it up my ass. Where's the joke there? Is the joke that it's a dildo that's gonna go up the ass? It's, it's, it's literally shock value humor, right? And I thought she was above this, I really did. But it's literally shock value humor, and it's definitely a point that you're meant to laugh at, okay? Their downstairs neighbor was currently starring in a reality show called Cult and Charm, whatever the fuck, which, like all reality shows, was about a group of close friends who hated each other. Sort of, what a witty observation of reality shows! Oh fuck, that's so clever. Lockwood, you genius, you truly are the new Joyce! No, no, she said, laying her hand on the stylist's arm, feeling that new and unstoppable stream of care pour out of her palm. I was just thinking that you and I have seen very different memes in our lives. White people who had the political educations of potatoes, lumpy, unseasoned, and biased towards the Irish, were suddenly feeling compelled to speak out about injustice. She's done it! She's done- we can go home! She's done it! She summarized white people. We can go home, right? It, see ya! I'm off. In all seriousness, I know that I'm kind of stunting on this book, and I know that it's like, I'm deliberately, like, misunderstanding parts of it. I get- I get what it's trying to do, but the problem is, is that it's- it's really- it's- it's really quite one note in- in what it's saying. It's- it's really quite set in its ways. It- it doesn't- if you- if, if you were to compare this to something like, say, Ulysses, I, I think Ulysses really changes throughout, like, and, I, and I, I'm not a particularly big fan of Ulysses, just like I'm, I'm not a fan of T.S. Eliot, I just, I just find that kind of writing really kind of, sort of, sort of lazy. I know that, I know that that's the, that's the, uh, normy, uh, poorly read <laughs> opinion to have, but what I mean is, is, is that I, I, even despite that, I feel like Ulysses really changes over the course of its narrative, and it really presents new ideas constantly, and it changes the viewpoint, and it really does that. And even though this book is only about 200 pages, it's, it's not, it, it doesn't, it doesn't change. It do, well, it does. It has this second half where it talks about her losing her child, right? But the thing is, is that it really comes out of nowhere, and the whole first half setup doesn't contribute to it. So, for the first... I'd say 90, for the first 90 pages, I was really just bored and not having a good time with it. Uh, because I didn't find it all that witty, I didn't find it all that, 
intelligent or observant. I really didn't feel like she she understood it. I really didn't feel like she understood the internet, which is definitely not the point that she wants me to make. I, I just really didn't feel like she understood it. It's not like the book is like, it's not like a one out of 10 or anything. It's not like an incompetent piece of work. Patricia Lockwood's like, like even though I've, I've stumped it on the humor, her, her wit comes through at points, her little observations. And I really like the actual ending, like the final line of the book, what is it? Someone at some point slid her phone out of her pocket and she lifted off her feet lighter. Her whole self was on it if anyone wanted. Someone would try to unlock it later and see the picture of the baby opening her mouth, about to speak, about to say anything. I really like that. that that's the end of the book. I like that final line in terms of finally bringing the two halves together. That is the, the book about grief and losing a baby and the book about the internet in the sense that it's about people wanting to say something and wanting anyone on the internet to hear them and to hear their grief and the people on the internet are so obsessed with their own lives and posting it that they don't really care about anyone else. And that's that's definitely the point the book is trying to make. The problem is that that is incredibly obvious. That's obviously the case. No one needed to write a book to say these things. We all knew it, right? It definitely didn't mean, like, people were talking about how this pushes forward the form of the novel. I don't think it does. I think it summarizes something that anyone who's been on the internet knows. Everyone knows these things, right? Everyone knows that everyone on, on the internet is self-absorbed and mean and hides behind their uh, anonymity. That That's totally how it works, right? And I guess someone had to write this book. Someone had to write a book about the internet in a way that wasn't uh, unbearable, but even so, this book is very cringe, and it and it and it throws in paragraphs that made me stop and go, "Wow, like, do you really, do you know what like a meme is? <laughs> do you know what these things are? Like, fuck, it's cringe." The book also really blends together. Like the paragraphs that I've taken out that I that I read are not things that that jumped out to me. They're just random points where I was like that. Alright, I'll quote that. What I mean is is that these things don't stand out to me. After you've read 90 pages of it, none of it stands out to me. It just becomes this blend of uh, uh, tree frog, new species of tree frog, da da da, dildo in the ass, da, 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 da. right? And I know that that's the point she's trying to make, that the internet kind of just blends information together, da, 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 da. but what I mean is, is that the book does that, which is like the internet, and that means that the book sucks, like how the internet sucks, so I take it away from the rating. See, for better or worse, the book is very unique. There's not many books I've read that, that, that are this kind of bold in the sense that they just say what they say. Say, say what they say about the internet, you know what I mean? But there are points in the book where I feel like it's very poorly written, and points where I feel like it could be cut out and the narrative would not be disturbed, the points would not be disturbed, and the tone would not be disturbed. And given the length of it, for what it is, I feel like it's actually over long. I feel like if you had taken 50 pages out of it, it, might, it would have read a lot better and it would have been a lot more, um... Uh, it, would have, it would have had a lot more in common with, like, an analogy or, like, an extended metaphor, right, to do that. But because it really dwells on each feature of it, it dwells on this this war criminal committed suicide, that's what I read on my phone today, because it really commits to that, that's both a, a, a praise I can give it for its, its boldness and something I have to take away because of how annoying and tedious it is to read. A lot of it, it, it also really doesn't do deep cuts, it's very simple. They, they mention Charlie bit my finger, they mention the Mars rover, it's like, you know, like, ah, oh, like, okay, so Despacito and Big Chungus are there, but there was nothing stopping her, you know? The only thing that stopped her was when she published the book. If, <laughs> if she, <laughs> if she, if she had wanted to put them in, she could have, and I would still have, it would still be in line with all the other cringe in there. Like, can you imagine writing a book about grief and, like, the death of a child in the same book as, like, Despacito? See, I'm kind of doing my review in the same way that the book writes itself, which is that it's in a fucking- it, This is true stream of consciousness right here. There's no fucking through line in my review. It's just fucking like, oh, what a pain in the ass to read that was. Um, I'm gonna give the book, huh, I'm gonna give it a three, I think. A three out of ten. I think that's fair. In conclusion, I find the book very, very tedious, and monotonous, and repetitive. And I find that any real semblance of wit 
is diluted through shock value and um, and an, uh, an inordinate amount of examples of why the internet is bad. I also feel like the major themes are not things that are particularly new or um, exemplar or clever, just that the internet's bad and then it imprints values on you. I don't feel like that's particularly clever, and I also don't feel like it comes together very well. I don't, I don't feel like the book coalesces. And it is so self-absorbed and lost in its own irony that it forgets to be engaging or clever or say something new. I think that's the biggest problem is even though it's stream of consciousness and even though people are claiming it's a masterpiece for being so innovative, I really don't think it's saying anything new at all. And I think the 3 out of 10 is actually a very valid rating. Um, and I should get out of here before I lower it. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I'm just gonna go call some people gay on Facebook and then I'm gonna go play Among Us. Have a good day. <laughs>